Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel One on One. And today we're going to be looking at how to make this. It's a simple commercial of an IC area caving in and revealing our beverage, the subscribe to Top Channel One on One a beverage. And the project files are going to be there so that you can change it to whatever you want. We have this caving in, and then we a layer of particles that also fold inside like that. It's a surprisingly simple setup. Uh, let me first show you how I made this cave in. Uh, let me first hide the particle systems. So you see, uh, let me also hide this for now. So you see what we have here. The way I made this, uh, let me open up a new blend file here. You need a plane that is subdivided quite a lot. You select the part that you want caved in. Uh, something like that. You just turn on proportional editing and just push that down. I think. So. Let me just make it smaller and just push it down. Yeah, something like that. Uh, you can shade smooth and uh, now you can sculpt this and add extra detail. Uh, so you go to sculpting and uh, you need to turn on dino, dino topo. Uh, this will let you subdivide uh, the mesh where you want to add detail. Uh, for example, if I turn on dino topo, it gives you a warning, but that's okay. Uh, so if I brush here, you can see if I turn on uh, wireframe here, if I turn on wireframe here, you can see uh, whenever I brush, I get more detail and you can increase the number of subdivisions when you brush. So I can have extra detail like that. So uh, I wanted to have a lot of detail here and I uh, didn't want to just do it by hand. Uh, so you can get some height map textures and uh, use them as your texture in the brush here. So I can just come here and create a new texture and go into that texture and uh, import a new image. I have some height maps that I downloaded. So I'm going to grab this rocky brush here. You can go back to the to the sculpt brush settings or to the active tool settings and uh, change the mapping type from tiled which will just let you draw the detail directly like that uh, to something like stencil which turns this texture into a mask that you can move around holding down the right mouse button so say for some for an area like this and i can brush the detail like that and uh, move to a different area brush and uh, i can always go back to the texture and switch it to a different one do something like this move this around and uh, you can even go back to the tool and turn off and use image aspect ratio to use the image aspect ratio so I can rotate around, brush. To scale the image, you just hold down shift and then drag using your right mouse button and I uh, can just paint uh, like this so that uh, this becomes detailed, more detailed. Let me just change from stencil to random so that I can just quickly paint in uh, the detail and uh, let me increase the strength a bit here. You can even use control to just change the details. Okay, so let's say we are done with that. Uh, what we can do now is go to the object data and turn on shape keys. I'll add one for the basis, uh, this final shape, and then another one for, yeah, here. So for the final one, I'm going to go into edit mode here and just select everything turn on proportional editing and make sure my cursor is at the surface here and uh, make sure you have proportional editing on. I'm going to scale this on the X, basically making everything super flat like that. And if I increase the value of this, you can see we have something, we have a surface that is like that. And uh, now I can go back to the sculpt mode because I don't want to see any of these detail and just smoothen that out. Go back to the shape keys and turn off relative so that I can animate this using a single value. So you can see we go, we can go from one uh, to another like that. Uh, so I set I can set a keyframe, uh, I think at 10. Keyframe there, another one here. So I can bring in my can. Uh, this can is going to be included in the starter project and the final project as well. So you can, uh, this can be inside. So after that, if you want to make this deeper, what you can do is add an empty at the pivot point. Make sure it's the empty you add is at the surface here. So I'm just going to use cursor selected so that it's at, on the surface there. And add the empty there, just like that. And then select everything down here, all the vertices that make up this, and use control select 
the empty and use Ctrl H to add it as a hook. Uh, that way I can scale this if I want. So I, I can see I can make this even deeper if I want. Let's go back to the project file and I'll show you how I in instanced uh, the particles caving in. So, so I have these ice rocks and uh, they're, in a, they're in their own collection. Now if you add them as a particle system to this, I'm just going to first create a white paint. So let me white paint. Uh, you can see I'm not white painting this side because I know the camera is only going to be seeing this side. So there is no point in instancing particles where the camera is not going to see. It's not going to see. And uh, I'm also going to use small thing to spread out, to spread out this a bit. Yeah, okay, something like that. Create a new hair system or particle system, make it here and just make sure that the vertex group is the group we have created. The collection is these ice blocks. These are just rocks that I gave an ice material. So yeah, I'm just going to go to the particle system and render as collection and select the detailed collection. Just start randomizing everything. You can turn on advanced so that you access the rotation. Uh, make sure you set the rotation to be normal. If you set it to something like velocity and this is deforming, is deforming you will run into issues where the rocks seem to snap. Uh, let me show you some, do I see it here? Okay, I think I had fixed it here. Yeah, you see how the rocks just rotate around. And actually here it's not too bad, but uh, if you see that your rocks look a bit rotated, yeah, like this, yeah, you, you don't want that. You, so if you change that to velocity, then that's what will happen. Make sure this is set to normal. And now you can randomize everything now, just like that. Uh, this don't have to be that big. Now, if we even look at this, you can see that everything is start to take shape. And uh, the particles will also deform with the rocks. In the final version, you can see we have some falling in, uh, which uh, I think is a nice detail. Uh, so to do that, uh, that's very simple. You just need a plane about the size of uh, your hole, uh, like that. Apply the scale, remove any keyframes, and just subdivide it a few times. I uh, actually want even subdivision, so just add a subdivision there. Subdivide this a few times just like that, and uh, I can give this a particle system. And now, if I play, ah, I'm doing this in uh, the original project, so let me just copy that and uh, do it here. Yeah, so we have this. So, you see our particles. Uh, we can turn them again into the pieces collection. Uh, randomize everything, randomize. Uh, turn on advance, uh, turn on rotation. You can set this to velocity and randomize then everything. Uh, since these are falling, we can turn on dynamic and give the angular velocity maybe 0.5, set it to 0.5. Now if we play back, you can see these are falling down. There is this jump before they fall, and that's because of the normal, so I'll just remove that so that they just fall directly down like that. Now I can give this our collision setting so that these fall onto these. Now let me first also hide uh, the old particle system. So this is a bit faster. Now another thing I'm going to do is just change the visibility of this to Instancing to not show in the render so we can only see the particles. Now, if we play back, you see what we have. Uh, these are falling, and uh, uh, even the can here has a collision setting. That's why you see some a bouncing off and sliding away like that. But I don't like the fact that these are colliding and then bouncing off like this. I don't want that. So, I'm going to come here and increase the damping and randomize it a bit, increase the, uh, we don't want to add too many friction, too much friction because we want this to slide. So when these fall, they don't bounce too much. We don't want them to fall down. We want them to be part of the surface. So what I'm going to do is just move this close to the surface and go to the 
uh, actually before I even do that, before I even do that, let me first turn this back on. So I want to add this, deform this with the surface. So make sure that it's very close to the surface and the surface is flat. Make sure you're on frame one so that everything is flat and give this a surface deform modifier. Surface deform and uh, just select this as the target and bind. Now, when the surface deforms, uh, this also deforms just like that. So the only problem we have is we have a few issues with the rotation of these objects. So I'm going to go back to the particle system and uh, first things first, I'm going to reduce the scale of these rocks. And we only want these to start instancing when we start seeing the caving. So around frame 10, and uh, we only need to have this fall to about frame 30. So, and uh, uh, the lifetime can be 100 frames and randomize it by something like 25. And, uh, if I remove the instancing, see what we get. Things are falling. This surface is too close to this. I uh, will start with some collision, I think. So I'm going to just pull this up a bit so that we have some gap for this to fall down. And uh, I'm also just going to make sure that there isn't a lot of energy left for this to bounce around. Now we have too many particles, so I can reduce this to about and that's how you add those particles that are sliding in. Now, if you have the other particles that are around, that stick around, so let's see, and uh, you have a combination of those, and this, you see, is, you see what we have. Now, the issue is that some of these particles are just popping into existence, which is uh, not what we want. So you can use a texture, you can use a texture, a blend texture, uh, so let's set this to uh, a new texture, a blend texture, and use the mapping to be set to strand, stroke particle, and make sure this is set to size. As that way, they don't just pop out, pop into existence, but uh, they start out small and then uh, just just like that. And if you don't want them to to just disappear immediately, you can just edit the ramp here, the car ramp, uh, to make sure that uh, we end, we add another notch, a third knot at the end here, that changes the value back to zero. So I can bring the value back to zero here. Let me just bring the alpha so that we can see what we go, we, we do, we're doing. So we start out when the scale is zero, it goes up as time goes on and then scales back to zero at the end of the particle's life. So that's how we get those particles. And I think I can just adjust the particle size a bit so that and maybe increase them to be about 300, just like that. So that's how you get that. So we've seen the deformation. Uh, this is just using uh, the same particle system on the can, just like that. And uh, I think for the most part, that's it. Uh, the other thing I have in this, I have for this scene is I have this in the final render. You see, you see that we have some smoke effect to to show coldness. Uh, that's simply a noise texture uh, pushed into the principal, and and the mapping is the location is animated, uh, so that the smoke is just moving. You, you don't even need to create a shape like this. It can be a simple cube. Uh, I was trying to make something different, but it didn't work out. So I just left the shape as is, but uh, it doesn't matter the shape. You can just use a simple cube. Yeah, you just have to play with your scattering, add inst a lot of instances, and uh, you end up with what we have. Let's talk about the lighting before we end. It's not that complicated. You just have to play around with different lights and uh, find what works. And uh, since I had this reference here, it was very easy for me to play around with the lights to get what I want and uh, you can see I have uh, this area light and I even have these light blockers to just bring in add a little bit more contrast so you can see here this area is a bit darker uh, because of this these shadow blockers I also did some compositing uh, if I go to that you can see it's not 
too complicated, but if I remove that, you can see it's simple, plain like that. I added a vignette and uh, added some highlights because I wanted this blue highlight that you see here. It was hard to achieve with the light, so I added an ellipse mask, uh, which you can move uh, using these coordinates. I blur it and uh, use it as a mask to add some color. So I can make this even extreme. You can see how that looks. Yeah, so just to add in some areas of interest like that. And uh, that's our final composition. That's the project. If you want the starter file so that you can follow along with the project, with the tutorial, links are going to be in the description. If you want the final project, and that's also in the description. Yeah, if you have any cool images like this, you can send them on my Discord. In my Discord, and we can see how we can turn them into actual animations. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.